Hey guys, welcome back. We're in a really, really neat place right now. And there's a really cool project brewing. That involves all three of us. It's a big one. It's a lot. <laughs> it really is. So uh, buckle your seatbelts, because here it is. announcement. We're super excited to announce the partnership between Izzy Racing Cams, Hot Rods by Dennis Taylor, and Alex Taylor Racing to create probably one of the most notable iconic cars in hot rodding history, which is sitting behind us in the Speedway Motors Museum of American Speed. Yes. Take us away. Tell us how this project even came to be. Well, so we were, it was our 75th anniversary this year, and we wanted to do something really special, so we were thinking of a project to do. And we thought, why not do a tribute to Ed, but with the modern engine and the old chassis and everything like that, so people understand what a craftsman he was and how far ahead of his time he was. This is 1937, 38 that he did this, way before everybody else was doing it in the 50s. But Dennis, you can tell us more about that. Well, and, and not just 1937, way advanced for the time. But he was, what, 17 years old? 17, 18 years old. I mean, his skills were amazing. So, for those that might not know, Iski, Iskandarian Cams, was founded in 1948 by Ed Iskandarian. Ed mm -hmm. So give a little bit of background real quick for anybody that might not know, that's tuning in fresh, that doesn't know what this car is, doesn't know Iski, doesn't know Ed, why this is such an important year, why Ed's so important, and why this car is important. Well, the, the, the important thing is, that, it's our 75th anniversary, so he established the company in 1948, but he was like the original outlaw, I like to say. Like they started building this when they were 16, 17. He did some of the parts in shop class at 13 years old. And he was way ahead of the curve. These guys were, they didn't even have the word hot rod yet. And so this is one of the iconic, iconic hot rods. It made the cover of Hot Rod Magazine in 1948. And he says that's what yeah. started the business going, that really started pushing it. He bought a little ad in there. And that's really what started and grew the company. And the guys that were in this original Hot Rod Magazine that all advertised, all became titans of an industry. So you're talking about Edelbrock, ESD, all, the, all those type of guys. So it's really amazing. We, we really need to do this while he's still alive. He'll be 102 this year. He is just incredible. It's still incredibly ta like smart, talented. And still very This sharp, is a really yeah. neat project. But with that said, it's also Hot Rod Magazine's 75th anniversary. So it's some really iconic stuff happening this year. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of leads us to SEMA show this past year in 2022. This idea starts getting spitballed. I see Nolan, Dad, sitting in the corner scheming. You can just see mm -hmm. their scheming going on. Well, you can kind of talk about it. I know this project, when you started thinking about it, you got pretty excited because it's a pretty big deal. So kind of how did that come to be? So we were talking about a different car, just kind of a drag race car yeah. that we could build that would be something to celebrate the 75th, but then Somebody, I don't remember you or I won, we come up with the idea, what if we could recreate that car? It's mm -hmm. not an easy job, that's a challenge. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to it. But, you know, what <laughs> I didn't realize how hard it was going to be, no, actually. Until I never, you got here. I never gave him full respect. And you, you guys will really find the things that he did very interesting. It's so much craftsmanship, you're not going to believe it when we get into it. Yeah, once we got here, I didn't either. I didn't really think it was that important to come see the car. I mean, of course I wanted to, but I could recreate it with all the, the documents that we have. Mm -hmm. Once I got here, it's like, oh, my mind's blown. There's so many hand, de like, details. It's not just, like, parts here and there. Because at the time, you had, it's not like you could go to the catalog and pick something out. Like, mm -hmm. Ed was creating it mm -hmm. and is what led to this. Ed had a junkyard and he had a couple cool speed parts on there. Most of that stuff came out of a salvage yard or Ed's imagination. A lot of it came out of airplane mm -hmm. salvage, like there's some pieces on there that are specific to airplanes and we'll go over that, but it's amazing what he created. And it's really cool that the car is actually sitting in the Speedway Motors Museum of American Speed. The whole museum is incredible, yeah. but um, there is an awesome tribute here to Ed and so like to actually get to be here and looking at the car and checking it out, one is like just really cool, yeah. really helpful for the project, but two, Still going to have quite the challenge to build it, but it'll be a little bit less challenging because we are going to be yeah. partnering with Speedway Motors to get some parts from the catalog and things like that. Yeah. So 
lots of creative details, details, lots of creative details here. There's going to be lots of, you'll, you'll see, there's going to be casting and things like that, but mm -hmm. we're also going to be able to have the luxury of purchasing some parts as well. So. What better company to partner with on this project? I there's mean, not. I mean, it's terrific. You know, I, I had never been here to see the museum or the car in the museum. And when I got here, I mean, the, the description they did, the Don, Isky Roads or the Don of Hot Rod, that's exactly what it is in a nutshell and why it's so important and why it's going to be so cool to replicate this. And the history with Bill and the museum. Oh, yeah. It goes back, maybe not as far as Ed does, but close. They were one of our yeah. very first customers. I mean, they were early when they started ordering stuff. I mean, you're talking 50s, so. Yeah, unbelievable. So this is one of those projects that kind of all of the stars had to align and yes. work out. And it is, it's going to be probably kind of a tight timeline, kind of a tight <laughs> build. Uh, as you what we're used to. It's not, a month, it's not a month. It's not a month, it's not four yeah. months, but right now we're the beginning of March. We want to have this at SEMA show. Um, going to premiere at SEMA. And so there, you know. No pressure. Right? No pressure. <laughs> Anyways, we've rambled enough. We just want you guys to know that there's a really cool project coming. We're going to actually check it out right now, and um, you're going to see measuring it. It's really cool. So we came to get measurements, pictures, details, creative juices flowing. and picking uh, up parts. Picking up parts. That's going to come as well. So uh, get yeah. ready to go explore it. Later, we get to go through the warehouse. Oh, I'm just, looking forward to that. We have three days here, and three days probably isn't enough because... Yeah, there's no way to, to see the whole museum. There's not enough. No. And pick out cars yeah. and study this and do all that. But anyways, enough rambling. Let's check it out. Let's do a quick overview because there's so many details we can dive into. But what the car is and then some points that you notice starting front to back. So this is a 23T Roadster is what it's called, but it's really not. It's all different things put together. Did his own frame, a bunch of his own work. It's a flathead engine. Those are the basics of it. But Dennis can give you a little more in detail. Okay, it's either a 23 or 24. We're not real sure. We just bought a car and I think we bought a 24. They look a lot alike. But it's got a flathead. I think it was a 32 flathead is what I read on the wall back here. But it's got the maxi heads on it. So it looks much more like a modern engine instead of an old flathead Ford. So it's very cool. The exhaust valves are in the head. Then he's done, I was very confused about the grill shell. Ed made that from evidently a 33 Pontiac. That's also on the wall back here. But he turned two of them, put them together, clamshelled them upside down, right side up, made his own grill shell cast his own parts, very cool. Got the old suicide spring front end on it. I beam axle from like a 35 to 44. Then look at the interior, this is amazing. This is leather interior that was done in 1939 or something, a long time ago. Very cool car. Then he's extended the wheelbase. He flipped the rear end around. The spring is now in front of the rear axle. He extended the wheelbase by probably a foot, but the car is very long. He was going racing at the lakes made it much more stable and you know saying all of this stuff is really you know today could sound trivial it's not by any means but keep in mind mm -hmm. ed's age and the time that this was done like even you looking at it now you're like this yeah. is a lot this is a it's lot, a lot. It's a 17 lot year old in 1937 that's when they started when he started his first iteration of it you gotta remember he didn't have the tools that we had no, he had a little two-car garage the stuff that he yeah. made is is really pretty or any, anything to go by no he was just shooting in the dark because he didn't have anything to copy so. kind of like the beatles right <laughs> yeah you know you invent rock and roll yeah. you gotta you gotta make the stuff well yeah. this is kind of like inventing hot rod yeah, that's yeah. What's amazing. so keep that in mind as we're going through all this it's like you have to put this car back into the era that it was created and think of yourself mm -hmm. when you were 17 and, and creating it so keep all that in mind as a check as you're going because that's something that makes us really iconic all pre-second world war you think about that yeah yeah there's a different America back then it's totally different <laughs> so that's just an overview but I know that as you have started at the front and, and gone to the back there's lots of little little details I, I can really get lost in between so let's let's get lost somewhere but let's make that lost spot at the front at the engine first because there's a lot there you want to start there let's start there all right I didn't get to be here this morning to see the first kids in the candy store reaction from them. So the cool part is they've already gone through and dug through a lot of facts and history and piece stuff together. So <laughs> take us away because I know there's some points you want to talk about. It's kind of like it's really hard to just walk up to a car like this and you know it's a tea bucket. We've seen thousands of them mm -hmm. but it's not. This is the first one. I mean Norm Grabowski and Tommy Ivo made what 
my generation or the older generations would remember as a tea bucket, but this is the predecessor to that. So you walk up and you see it's really a steel car. It's amazing. So look at the engine turn firewall. I'm trying to decide if that's stainless or aluminum. I believe that's a piece of stainless, and I would venture to say he got that from one of the aircraft salvage places, or not salvage, one of the aircraft factories. Yeah, because that would have been. Right? I mean, two, not just time, but location. Like yeah, that's, he was. He, he had, was right he in the middle was of that. Just down the block, the airfield. Yeah. What yeah. Ed had that most of America didn't have was the location. I mean, he had. You know, T models were everywhere. They were five bucks. <laughs> but he bought the, the T-model body, but he had, you know, a access to aircraft. He had access to chrome shops. He had, like, access to this probably salvaged World War II uh, wing strut material. So the stuff that, that he used on this car is amazing. But, you know, it, it, there's just more to look at than just a tea bucket. So you'll start here, like the grill shell. Never seen anything like that before. At first, when I'm looking at the pictures, I think, well, he took a 32 Ford grill shell and cut it up and did some work. Turns out it's a 33 Pontiac, and he put took two of them, turned them upside, one upside down, put them back together, and made, you know, so the bottom is wrapped around like the top is. Look at this, though, Alex. So this is evidently the Pontiac oh, emblem, no but way. look at what he did in there. <laughs> Ed That's left so no cool. stone untouched. <laughs> that mean, is literally, I think Ed may be um, the original marketing. branding, marketing, yes. the name carries you situation because. <laughs> he did it. I mean, so he made that skull. Yeah, in, in junior high, they in shop class, he made this 13 or 14 years old, I guess. Um, he cast this at, and the valve covers. Okay, so funny story. This is the story that's been told forever, that Ed cast this skull. It's written down in books, it's on plaques, it's in the like museum, it's all over the place. Funny enough, in a couple weeks, you're gonna actually see a video where I sat down and talked with Ed. We talked for five hours, and we actually talked about his car for an hour and a half or two. Turns out there's a slightly different story, actually a completely different story to this, and a bunch of stuff that people thought they knew about the car. Um, so take this with a grain of salt, but keep in mind, this is the story that's been told for pretty much forever. I'm one of the, the generations, I came much later, but in my high school, we made stuff like this. I made a skull shift knob. I don't think they do sand casting in school anymore, <laughs> no. but you know, Ed probably cut that out of a piece of wood and then mm -hmm. made a mold and made that in shop class. So we're gonna actually make one of these yeah. and we'll film it. They've got a, a <laughs> yeah. plastic oh. one. I don't know if you, yeah, we, they made a mold off of this already. Oh, no way. Speedway is done, they made a mold, so we're gonna use that and, and we're gonna cast our own off of wow. that. So It's gonna be cast off of something that is cast off of that. So you've got all that sort of stuff, but you know, coming in, I didn't know what kind of front end you, Ed used in 1937 or 39, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Right. I think I've decided that that's a 35 to 40 Ford axle and I'm not positive about that, but it's very, very close. If not, it was a wishbone style front suspension, which is the old hot rodders trick. And these are the guys that pioneered it. They cut the ball off and split the wishbones. So it's tied into the frame rail on each side now. It's got the suicide spring up front. It's got juice brakes. I thought these were probably just Ford brakes, but one of the guys here at the museum pointed out that they're probably Bendix brakes and I don't know a lot about that but we'll probably use Ford brakes and we're probably going to go back with drum brakes just because they work and they look bitching. So there's some stuff that will be to a T like that's going <laughs> to to a T but I think <laughs> I, see what you did. uh, I didn't intentionally but I caught it so there'll be some stuff that's to a T the same the exact but you know highlighting some of the engine components here but it's not going to have the new one isn't going to have the same powerhouse it's going to have some differences there and that's where some of the fun stuff is because ed took what was advanced at the time mm -hmm. and you know now we get to take what is advanced for this time and so how do you build a car like this how do you build a tribute to something so iconic yeah. so nolan talked with ed and ed told you kind of what he would do yeah i mean you, you he like we were saying, should we put an LS? That's what all the hot rodders do. And he said, well, we were the leaders. We were the tip of the spear, the front end of it. So we would do something that they haven't done yet, which is what they did. Like they made their own manifolds, their own casting, their own heads. So you want to have something that's brand new that people are just starting to build. And that's why we're going to do a Godzilla. How cool so is that's that? the deal. Yeah. So Godzilla made it up to a Tremec five speed is the plan. Um, that we're going to do, and we're going to do some special things to the engine so it almost looks 
pretty close. Kind of what we, yeah. kind of what we think is. I'd like to think about it. Is Ed started this car in 1937, but he got sidetracked. You know, the war came along. He got drafted. The car yeah. sat somewhere. Well, now the dude's 102 years old, and he's still raring to go. So yeah. he pulls a project out. He's not going to put a flathead in it. No. No. You're going to put the newest, best motor that he uh -huh. can get. And, and that's the thing. That's what's cool about it is because you're able to uh, recognize the history and recognize pieces that make the car iconic mm -hmm. while carrying on Ed's mentality. Because if you guys know Ed, and everybody that I talk to that's ever met Ed has an Ed story about how yes. they told him this or this, or they talked cars for this long, and he's 101 right now. Like, 101 or two. He's turning 101. 101. He'll be 102. Yeah, turning 102. Yeah, 102. 102. So anyways, um, yeah, no, that, that's the really cool part is taking something and he's still here to see it and still here to have comments on, you know, it's not like, what would Ed do? It's like, hey, Ed, what would yeah. you do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's cool. How many people can do that? We have a list of questions for him now that we've seen the car. <laughs> like, why did you do this? Or that's amazing. And the cool part that. is, yeah. he'll have the answer. Yes, we'll have the answer. This is almost like having your own time machine. It is. It really yeah. is to go back. It I is. mean, out of the icons, since nobody left. I mean, 101 years old, so yeah. the opportunity to do fast. this, and we have to do it now, and it's the 75th anniversary, so it's perfect. It's perfect. Super cool. Yes, it's perfect. So then, walking back, highlight some of the stuff here, engine-wise. That even though we're not doing the same combination, but there's some really cool stuff about it. So there was there was different heads available back in those days. There was Ardon heads, which was a double overhead valve, had the intake and the exhaust valve overhead. These, I've learned, are heads that were built to help solve the cooling problems with the flathead for mostly for trucks, bigger stuff. Mm -hmm. So they, the exhaust valve is in the head, but if you look down on the side, see that's where the exhaust used to come out of the side of the block. Oh, yeah. So the water runs, the exhaust runs through the water, you know, the exhaust ports. Mm -hmm. So this raised it up and put it in the cylinder head, which is really cool. It's a good idea, but it also has performance benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a split valve cover. It looks kind of like a, an aircraft engine, but Ed and his friends as I read made these this one piece valve cover they cast it look at the porosity you yeah. know somebody scratched Iskandarian in here I don't know if Ed did that or not but that's just as cool as it can be yeah that's his signature so then he's got a vertex magneto mounted on the front of it which is really cool it'll run without a battery it looks like probably a cut down shortened model T in a way it looks like a T radiator because of the way it hangs over but I'm guessing it's probably more like a it may even be an A model radiator that's cut down I'm not sure but so that's the engine he's got this leaving the intake valve in the block he's able to use a standard flathead manifold so this particular one Nolan was saying that he went down the street to his buddy Vic Edelbrock and said hey you know my homemade intake manifold didn't work it did not work so he went to Vic instead isn't that wild that's literally like and and now you might think of that as a competition thing which is super cool because yeah. Edelbrock comp are together and then you have the mm -hmm. Isky cams but originally those guys were friends like it wasn't it wasn't that rivalry. they like, were neighborhood they were neighborhood friends, friends. and so know? that's cool and so Edelbrock is actually aware of the project and everything mm -hmm. and so like it's really cool that uh, incorporating lots of legacy brands and the yep. history because that's the main thing that this is about is the history the legacy and going from there so so I think what yeah. we may do we're talking about Speedway has new Stromberg 97 carburetors so if we do a Godzilla motor, which is very, people, everybody says, Godzilla's too big, it's too big, it's too big. We, you and I have seen them. Yeah. It really doesn't appear to be that much different. And it's a good looking. It's a good yeah. looking engine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Nolan wants us to cast valve covers to go on the Godzilla that look like Iskis. And then we'll probably do three Stromberg 97s on it, but we'll just use them for throttle bodies and we'll make injectors hidden under the homemade intake manifold. And see, this is the stuff that you guys are going to love because <laughs> that's where the fun, you guys want to see the how-tos and the builds and things like that, that's where this car will be really, really neat because it's not just like, we have to go 200 and run sixes in this. Like, there's room for hot-rotting roots and things yeah. like that where you can do the creativity without just having to be very intentional and purpose driven. Hot rodding is really originally more about creating something yourself, mm -hmm. setting yourself apart yeah. from everybody else. We've kind of, I mean, it still is that, but now we focus on. It's racing. Our stuff is. It's racing, still racing. and details, yeah. everything's yeah. so different. Seeing this car makes me really understand the hot rodding and what it was like and why this was on the cover. Yeah. Like to see, you know, because we see them now and it's all cookie cutter, fiberglass exactly. bodies, things right. like that, which is still cool if you're building one. But to see what he was actually doing, you see that like, he was way out 
in it's, front of everybody. Yeah, and and that's where it'll be cool with the Godzilla because it, it mm -hmm. is going to be it's it's kind of that it's an homage to the the heritage yeah. basically. So uh, you guys are going to love it because I see really cool stuff coming out of it. Well, Can we could never take this car out to Cars and Coffee, but once we make a detachable steering wheel, <laughs> and me and Dennis can fit in it, we'll be it's able to take it to Cars and Coffee. Yeah. yeah, so I was going to say, wait yeah. a minute, can you guys fit? Oh, do you no. see this spot? You know what? Look at that. Hang on. Hang no, on. there you don't. You don't go there. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying. People make fun of short people, but built for racing is the thing. You know what I would really like to do? I don't know if you're into this, but could we put her in there? Yeah, go ahead. Because yeah, we can you imagine? Pictures, I think you're like this. I don't know how he drove it. You know, there's a picture. Well, Hot Rod took him out in 2013, and he fit in here to drive it at the lakes. Oh, I don't. Cool. I don't know how he did it. I asked him. I said, I don't know how he fit in there. That's cool. I don't know well, how anybody can. Are you do sure? That. I yeah. Just don't crunch the seat. Okay. You want to get yeah. Okay. Come from that way. No, come from that way. Okay. And step on the carpet. I feel wrong right now because this oh, is fine. in the museum. Go around that side okay. and I'll hold you Because I really want to see how it fits. I don't know how a person can. No fit one in freak it. out. I'm being very careful. I'm not going to hurt anything. But I am in a museum. It feels awkward. This is wrong. Yeah, this don't is what slide. Try I'm gonna. To keep your... I'm gonna sit very carefully. Yep. See how would how would you get in that car in a hurry? Very carefully. How it, tall is Ed? Ed very is five six. Oh. So he's short. How tall are you? Five four. Five four. Yeah. Hang on, everybody. Subtle, slow movement, slow as fast. She could hardly fit in there. That's yeah. what I'm saying. How did Ed fit in there? Look at that. So the gas pedal. How did there. he drive this? He did 120 miles an hour. You can't. The steering wheel is in your lap. 120. Miles, you know what? The heavy. The steering is super heavy. It is. I am. See if you can even reach the gas pedal. It's up under the dash. Oh no way! And then you got to shift. Okay. See, like that. The shift's not too bad. The actually. legs and everything here fit. What's weird and feels wrong is the steering wheel in my lap. Like. My legs are touching the steering wheel. I know, it's interesting. With all the stuff he did, why didn't he shorten it? I can't, well, and or well, raise it. you know what it is? In, in the picture on the wall here, he is super skinny. What She's are you super to say? skinny. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I, I honestly, though, I don't know, because, like. How he drove it. I mean, I'm, my stomach's not touching, but my legs are. I. I That's you would a, it's think amazing. right there that that would drop. So, what are you guys going to do? What's the change here? We're going we're to make a detachable steering wheel. We're going to make it built for Fat Man. Okay, guys, this will come back and. <laughs> I'm the one Men or man? I said men, men or. Oh. I said men. men. Fat Man. Fat okay. Man. All right, all right, I got it. You guys will be back from this video in a second, but this is an iconic moment. So, uh, we're going to pause for some picture opportunities. Okay. Let's do that. Because. I don't want to move. Because you're never getting in it again. I know. I feel... You may be the only person that's set in this car in a hundred years. Way to put Nolan on the spot. Besides yeah. Ed. <laughs> yeah. Ed... Ed Have you ever said the him? last... Oh. He, no. Has Nolan ever okay, said No. Up. Even when I was young working there at 13, I didn't fit in that car. <laughs> and I was skinny then. Again, I feel wrong. We stopped and took pictures, but I, it turns out we know someone who knows someone, and they said it's okay. He said it's okay. The guy, the guy that built this, would say that it's okay. Yes, they have permission, but don't anybody else ever try don't this. Do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. this. Don't do this. This is not authorized. This is a not kids' story. This is one of the coolest museums you'll find, but they're not going to be cool with this. I'm just telling you. <laughs> they probably were freaked out that I was diving in. I kind of was freaked out. Anyways, we did this for research and development purposes. Yes, and maybe, maybe because the steering was so. Hard that he used that leverage to be so close to the wheel, like they kind of do. Maybe. The but still, if like the I wheel's know. rubbing on your legs, it's not going to turn. That's the. I don't know. It's crazy. It's one of. The, it's kind of like the pyramids. I'm going to definitely ask him why. It's. A, I'm going to ask him out of all the custom stuff. Why don't you cut that and make it shorter and see what he says? And then he's going to say, "Don't you recreate my car? Bro. Yeah. <laughs> don't make him man." Um, I'm going to get out before I mess something up. And then we're gonna go back to more details. I'm gonna carefully, hang on, hang on, this has gotta be. It's not that it's that hard, I'm just trying not to. Don't drag it across it. Sorry, Ed. So instead, wins the race, okay. There we go. Ow, my hip popped. Yeah. My foot hit, okay. It is crazy when you think about it. All right, that was a lot, that was really close. Okay, anyways, back to the what we're here for. Yes. <laughs> um, so. Details on the inside. The inside of this car, is, it just blows my mind because this is this kind of a standard thing. It's an Auburn dash, came out of an Auburn 
chord, whatever. Do some bird type thing, but it's an Auburn dash. It's very common. But it makes me wonder, was this the first one? You know, how many were before this? This this dash became very, it was a standard hot rod dash for lots of cars, 32 Fords. I mean, they used it way up in the 60s. We still use them. You can buy them recreated. But since this one was put in here in 1937 or 8, whatever yeah. you said, mm -hmm. that very well could be the first Auburn dash ever put in a hot rod. So then you got the tack and the steering column drop that we talked about. You look that over, yeah. it's got an amphenol connector on the back. That's from World War II. That's an airplane That's tack on there, I'm pretty sure. I'm so you can attest to interior and leather and things like that. This is not a simple leather interior this uh, this interior now would cost you a, a lot of money i mean it's not just leather which is leather's cool we do well, all yeah, the time but I mean this yeah. look at the pleats the the way this is done it's pleated and folded pleated and folded there's no stitching visible i would create the same thing i'd put a i'd glue some landau foam on the back of a board and put leather over it and, you know stitch it whatever there's multiple ways I, I, I might even cut grooves and push it down in with a tool but this is all sewn and it's not over foam see the kind of cotton upholstery mm -hmm. material they did then they put piping in here and you can just tell even though it's deteriorated even the floor has well, yeah, I guess the it's only going carpet the binding yeah. all that's done by hand and it's mm -hmm. every line is perfectly straight look at the you probably didn't think about it but look at the bolster the bolstering? he yeah. was working he had his ergonomics, or at least the guy that did the upholstery had the ergonomics in mind. So this is something that I love in the interior, is these these plaques. No one can talk more yeah. about them, but not only was the car built and shown, you know, it became a show, mm -hmm. but it was built to perform. It performed for the mm -hmm. time, and these plaques He was racing before business that. ever entered his mind. So this plaque, it, it's when he hit 120 miles an hour in the modified class. So the new car that we're doing, you're gonna take it out there. Either one of you guys got to go 120. 120 we before we can mount a plaque, it has to have cred. It's got to go 120 that's as it so sits. Cool. So that's what we're gonna do. Then we can put our plaques in because we earned it. That's cool. Does I the did. cam thing have specs for the cam on there? The cam does have specs for the camshaft. Yes. That's pretty cool. So we'll do that too. How neat. Yeah, but the Godzilla version of that. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit bigger cam. Yes, a little bit bigger. Was that a three-quarter race cam? I think that was like a max one grind or so something. So that was like, like that. the yeah, whole the, well, thing. Well, that was like he was throwing the whole enchilada yeah, at that, that time. The whole enchilada. Yeah. Okay, so there's Getting more that. than just interior. There's, I need to go around the other side, but we'll talk about back up just a little bit and look at the windshield angle. The angle of that windshield compared to the cowl itself. A T model, that windshield would have came straight up. And taller. Yeah, much taller. So this is what I think is the stock model windshield stands but they've cut them angled them back and shortened them down so you know Ed's thinking about aerodynamics in mm -hmm. 1937 of course I guess that's not that you know out of the question yeah they were worried about aerodynamics but he was concerned with it right here the body was there's a, a the very first time I saw pictures of it I thought this it, what is that body it's not a 23t because 23t this curves up a little bit more and most people really like that. That's kind of an iconic thing about a 23T is it's got that shape to it. But this one's almost flat. Well, so I get here, which I needed to come see this. I start looking at it. It's like, I don't understand. How did he do this? It's got the body line and everything built into it. But if I, I started looking closer, this piece of body line right here is actually a separate piece. It's half round like this up here. I believe this upper cap is a piece of boat rub rail, stainless steel <laughs> boat rub rail that went around the boat. He bent it, which isn't easy because I've done it myself. He's formed it to the top of the body and screwed it on. Well, on the side here, you can look where the paint is missing in places. It had the same screw holes, but Ed made rivets. I believe he probably literally riveted this piece to the body. It could be screws with nuts on the backside bolts, but it's separate. So he cut the body down to what he thought made the car look better. Mm -hmm. It's more streamlined. It's different than everybody else's T model, which is what Ed was after. You know, That's I want something awesome. just a little bit different. And he put that piece back on there and it's so well done. You have to look really close to know that that's not a stamped body line right there. So something else to note here that's actually really cool is you guys are watching. So 
the average person that's going to come up and look at that is going to be like, oh, neat. But that's where dad's going to be great for recreating this is because it takes attention to detail. You have to know what you're looking at to know what you're recreating. Yeah. I'm going to throw another kink in there because I, I didn't think about this earlier until just now. Most people would have probably, the only straight piece on here is just whatever, 24 inches right mm. here. Most people would have cut it here, cut it here and butted it up and been, you know, made three pieces out of yeah, it. Still. Think about what Ed did. So this is close to four foot long. Curves here. You know, that's three foot long. So he made this out of one piece. Yeah. That's so amazing. when he's been in this thing, and I've bent this stuff, the stainless steel, it's very tough. You have to keep it from twisting and you have to keep it from kinking. Mm -hmm. You can't beat on it because you'll put dents in it. So he formed and there's nothing straight about it. It's it curved, curved all the way around and he had to go all the way around. It's easy to cut it and make this one then make another one like it and put yeah. a straight piece on. But to make that one piece, that's a lot of work. And you know what? You got a lot of work. In a lot, in very little time. <laughs> you know, how you put it like that. I might hate you guys. <laughs> put me, we should talk about SEMA 2024, right? No, it's oh. 2023, coming up. He definitely can see how Ed's starting to think. But that's I'm how he that's, does things. That's the crazy that's thing about That's the valuable it. part of having him do yeah. the car versus somebody else oh, because, no like, you have to pick those pieces up and go with yeah, it. Yeah, there's no other way. But I'm just I'm just old enough to to kind of remember some of the guys doing this cool stuff. I've done it myself, but I'm young enough to still do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not yes. I'm not in the wheelchair yet, so I can actually recreate so, it. But so. In 23, and I'm not a T-model expert, but in 23, 24, T-model day, you could buy the same car as a truck. So this turtle deck, as they called it, which was a trunk, which you couldn't even pack your friggin' makeup in that. <laughs> so, but anyway, you could have a truck bed on here, which a lot of them did. You know, they mm -hmm. had whatever the length of the truck bed was. They weren't real long, four foot or something. And then when people like Tommy Ivo, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I think it was Norm Grabowski built the first one and Tommy Ivo copied it. They took that truck bed and they shortened it down to whatever, 12 yeah. inches or something. Absolutely. They just sectioned it, put it back together. And it looks really cool. You know, it had a tailgate on it. They usually have a little cover mm -hmm. and the batteries back here. This is the option. This is the turtle deck. This is the, the family wagon, if you can imagine. So I'm going to open it up and I want you to see what I'm talking about in here. Now remember, he's added this bottom section, this four inches was not on there. That You're going to see a little bit more depth in here than it really had. Okay. It only came to here. So you put your luggage or your tools or whatever in here, you didn't really go across country in these. I mean, mm -hmm. people did, but yeah. they usually had the stuff strapped to it or whatever. Yeah. So this is the actual space that you had. There is no space. And there's not a lot of space. So the, the gas tank, I don't know what it is. It, it's something, maybe a tractor, who knows. The gas cap's kind of cool. When you open that up, that's the vent. And then when it gets so far open, the gas cap screws off. This is probably airplane stuff. Look oh, at the wow. cork seal yeah. on there. So the gas actually still but smells The vent is good. pretty cool. Yeah, so you turn it with the wing nut tighten the cap up and then if you if you're parked and you don't want you know a vent for whatever reason i don't know why you would not want one but you t turn it and it shuts the vent off so one of the stories is the mexico trip yes it took this the 37 i believe 37 or 39 they took it down to mexico guadalajara and uh, they were driving on the beach they thought it'd be fun and it got stuck in the water so it flooded so they had to tow it out but with another model yeah, T. Yeah, with another Model T pickup or whatever it was. Who, on his truck. way down there, I guess, the thing just about beat his teeth out. Oh, yeah, there's no suspension in it. So he said it was super hard to drive but on their roads. It was not like living in L.A. He yeah. was pretty spoiled. Yeah, he's, yeah, he was used to concrete and yeah. asphalt. But he decided down there that he was going to put shocks on it. Mm -hmm. He needed shocks. I don't know if it didn't have them on the front and rear or what. Yeah. But, you know, in typical hot rodder fashion, running around on basically perfect roads, who, didn't, who needed shocks? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting to me that it's got tube shocks back here, but if you look, they're not, you know, I could go to the parts store and, and buy a shock that would bolt back on there, but that's not a, that's not a new shock. I don't know what year he put this on there. But yeah, that's on our list to find out. Assume that it was sometime post 37, but can't be that long ago. I don't know when those shocks came out. The crazy thing that I, I think about this that you're explaining is that this, the rear end should normally be right or right about here right yes and under this but it's moved back 
all, to stretch it, but also you got your shock mounts on it now. You wouldn't be able to do that here. I guess you'd have to go back mm -hmm. here. Everything's in front of the rear end now and used to in the and see the frame is totally custom i don't know where in here the cross member would have been mm -hmm. it could have been back further but whatever the case was the rear end was in front of the cross member the shocks you know that wasn't a thing but they could have been behind it basically imagine that that's the front of the car out there instead of yeah, being this direction way. so he extended the wheelbase by probably 12 inches by moving basically turning this tube on this rear axle mm -hmm. tube which this spring mount was made is forged together this one was over there and that one was over here so he's flipped the rear end around to and do that. extended the wheelbase it makes the car look way different i mean it gives it a totally I mean, different look it looks a lot meaner that way it looks much faster it's yeah. it's made to be stable at high speed so the other thing that's the, the reason we're here lots of reasons is figure stuff out like this we're going to recreate this this same swoop we're going to use mm -hmm. cardboard but things like the turtle deck so when i said you could have a truck bed see this turtle deck's not actually attached to this body so this all of this down here this is a facade see that's some kind of cover uh, yeah. we've got to recreate these covers and the dimensions but there's a frame back under it. It's actually very low. You don't think about the frame being so low because the side pipe's hanging down so far. Right. But we, we've got to create this look. This is aesthetics. He did that simply to make it look better. That serves no function, but Ed had, you know, he wanted looks. Class. He wanted class. The pipes are so classy. The exhaust just blows my mind. Look at the... Uh, the diameter one I'm, I'm i'm not sure this may be three inch but i i have this feeling that it's a little bit less than three inch but it it slips together right look at the welds oh he's sanding them down and polish them well and no you and i would sand them down and polish them okay so what did he Ed do? didn't have that's true okay. die grinders with sandpaper and stuff oh did he fill them feel underneath you can still feel the welds Okay. So I assume that he probably used files. I'm sure that's done with a rat tail file and probably a flat file. But look at the quality of that work right there. That's, see, I, that, I wouldn't think about that. That is. Until you look at it. It blends like incredibly well. And that, look at the diameter of that tubing. Yeah. A flathead race motor back in those days looked like a P trap under your sink. This, is, this looks like a Harley Davidson pipe. You know, it's big. Huh. But there's also something really interesting. See this? See that pipe right there? Yeah. On the exhaust? Yeah. I excavated and examined and removed the seat and the floorboard because I saw a muffler from behind. Up inside of this frame, there's a long muffler. I think it's a Smitty's muffler, which I'm sure Speedway still sells. It looks kind of like a glass pack. So he put these exhaust on, he had to reach, he probably did it with the seat and the floorboard out and welded this T-pipe across the two sides and then right out of the middle of it, it shoots back into a muffler. So he can go up behind this thing, put a cap on that exhaust and make it go out the muffler. Okay, that's cool. It's very cool. I'm also looking under here and you're not gonna see anything. I guess that's There's a arrow. Belly pan. It's very, it's totally flat, totally straight. Can you imagine having a belly pan on it? El Mirage. In 1938. Yeah, like that's, I was like, I'm looking under expecting to see something and it's, you can't. It's I did that too. I wanted to see the transmission. It's like, there's no transmission there. That's actually, that's a, that's a really cool, mm -hmm. that's really cool. It's so advanced. It's so far. And I don't know Bonneville and El Mirage back in those days, but for the world, that was pretty advanced. Well, they knew a little bit about aerodynamics and all that stuff, but still for the average guy building a car that they're hoping to go 100 miles an hour in, you probably didn't worry that much mind, about and aerodynamics. And keep in mind, there's no internet, there's no blogs, there's no forums, <laughs> no. there's not even no, Hot, Hot Rod, Rod Magazine, magazine. <laughs> exactly. like, you know, like that's all. Was there a time when there was no internet to tell you how to do things? <laughs> I know, Come but on. I'm saying like, even think, like Hot Rod Magazine wasn't. That's a sixth He didn't get issue. his tech articles from yeah. Hot Rod. Like this all was happening before the forum. Like he made the stuff for The dude the was the Jimmy Page yeah. of Hot Rod. Anyways, as you guys can see, we could go on and on and on and on about this. Um, we'll get into more depth on this in later videos, but I think now is a good time yep. to wrap up, process, get more ideas, and then we have even more coming here at Speedway Motors uh, and the Speedway Motors Museum of American Speed. That's like the coolest name for a museum. 
America. An homage to speed. The museum is like the coolest place on <laughs> earth. I love that. Um, do you guys feel overwhelmed, knowledgeable, learned? Uh, it's a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I remember that. See, I did not, when see how he me. just looked at Dad and said, "That's more complicated than I thought." <laughs> well, it was gonna he, be. I, he felt the same way too. Well, I, mean, I know, but we I do. say that it's amazing. Like, you're like, "Yeah, bud, it's gonna be a hard." <laughs> you, I feel sorry for you. It sucks to be <laughs> it sucks you. Sucks to be you. It sucks to be a sucker. But it is gonna be really. I mean, cool. the thing is, is that the doing this, I mean, it's gonna be amazing. And then uh, having having Ryan, Ryan, yeah. having Ed see it and knowing he's gonna know what you had to go through to do it because he did it. Having once. the. Ch- being able to uh, be trusted with the challenge of recreating is a it's big very deal. special. It is, and the other and thing, the lakes. and the other thing that's really cool is just because, like, if there's a question, which there is, it's not like we have to go dig through the history books. No, I have a list of questions. Phone call away, and Ed will have the answer. So, like, it's a really cool time to get to do it. Really cool, neat opportunity to get to document it and share it and mm-hmm. do it. So, uh, I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it because it's like history coming alive and uh you're yeah what i think is cool is that you know people see them now the younger like the influencers the younger generation Mm -hmm. and some of them don't even know that original name is iskandarian they just know iski so to 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 build this and people understand what he did before anybody else it'll give them the respect that he should get from the younger generation you guys are gonna dig it so uh anyways this is going to be a editing nightmare (laughs) Sucks to be you. Sucks to be me. (laughs) So stay tuned. Bear with me. Um, But it's going to be fun. It's going to be a journey. There's going to be a lot to learn. So. uh, And for them, it's going to be like a soap opera. Oh yeah. They're going to be on the edge of their seat until we come back with the next episode. Probably because we all will be too. Yes, we don't know where Dennis is going to start. We we? don't know where it's going. Yeah, I'm not telling you guys. (laughs) We don't know what the show writer is going to create here. But anyways, all right, so big, big shot. Lots of people to thank in this situation. First of all, Iski. First of all, Ed Iskandarian. We have Nolan from Iski. Yep. That is the one that is allowing this to happen. Uh, Dad, for being, the, it's going to be a time commitment. Yes, thank you for so, taking this on. For big sure. deal. Thank and you then, for trusting me with you. It. Yeah, and then Speedway Motors, because they are going to be a really big part of this project and getting to have to come to the museum and everything and check it out. Um, and it's just, it's a perfect, perfect storm, perfect combination of companies, yep. and it's going to be really neat. So. It's a family thing, which is nice. Yep. So stay tuned. Uh, you can follow Dad on Instagram at DennisTaylor522, Nolan, IskiCams.com, in your Instagram. Iski Racing Cams. Yeah. And then Nolan, every once in a while, throws out some really entertaining posts. So he's Nolan Jamora. Yeah. Check him out <laughs> as well. Uh, Alex Taylor Racing here, and then. Megan's behind the camera. She'll probably be documenting. And, and then you can follow Speedway Motors Inc. on Instagram. And then if you want to check out more about the museum, you can follow Museum of American Speed and see lots of different projects. We're time consumed by this one, but I think we're going to sneak around and catch some more. Yeah. So anyways, stay tuned. Yes. Check it out. Lots to come. You know what? Be happy, go fast, and stay pretty. See you guys Or at least go 100, 120, 120, 120, 120, 120, 120 miles. 121. Yeah. <laughs> see you guys.